Book of Five Rings, by Miyamoto Musashi. This book, like Sun Tzu's Art of War, contains principles, ideologies, strategies, and ways of looking at reality because you become what you think about. That are ideal to help you move towards your vision. So this is not about necessarily war, or conflict, or fighting, or martial arts. This is a rich source of wisdom that will help you control your inner world. Okay, discipline yourself to control your inner world because the outer world is a reflection of your inner world. And we mentioned this many times throughout my videos. You become what you think about. You can track back just about any circumstance in your life. You can reverse engineer and track it back to a very specific thought that you had. So it's important then to think a certain way, okay? Because your thoughts drive your feelings, and your actions, your behaviors, which influence your environment. So we have to see reality from a certain perspective, and we have to draw wisdom from various sources. In this manual. Which is taught to those that are involved with very important combat missions. One of the key emphasis is put on mindset, and so what I want to talk to you today about is four elements, four categories, in which I have pulled out a number of quotes from the book, and I place these quotes in these categories because we're going to discuss them. Because I believe, from doing a lot of consulting and coaching and working with a lot of different entrepreneurs nowadays. That these four areas are the keys as far as producing results. Now, there's many different areas that I talk about, but right now I find that there's a lot of sticking points in these areas. So we're going to discuss these in detail. Number one is your inner world, how you believe reality to work, your inner self, wisdom, the difference between wisdom, acquiring wisdom, what is wisdom, essentialism. Okay, I did a whole discussion on essentialism, and I recommend you watch that video. And discipline. Let's get into some discussion. Inner world. There is nothing outside of yourself that could ever enable you to get better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. Everything is within. Everything exists. Seek nothing outside of yourself. How you believe reality to work is going to dictate the actions that you take. And the actions that you take influences the environment, creates your environment, creates your external world. A lot of us, when we're in the early stages of this journey, we put far too much emphasis on trying to change the external world, when the real power is changing ourselves within, and focusing on helping others change themselves within. Why do we fight against circumstances? Why don't we actually default? To changing ourselves within, well, because a lot of us kind of just look around to see what everyone else is doing, and if most people are just trying to change the external and not working on themselves within, we believe that that's the right way of being. Now, countless experiments, as far as entrepreneurship, personal development, and even if you look at your own personal life, points to the truth that when you evolve within, when your inner world changes, when your belief, your paradigm. Your values change within. Behaviors start to manifest that were never there before, and as a result, the external world changes, including the places, the environments, and the circumstances, and the people that we choose to associate with. Once we gather some information, some transforming information that switches our way of thinking internally, all of a sudden we might look at reality from a more empowering perspective. We start to make better decisions and more educated decisions. That are in our favor. We start to look at the external world and we say, "Here's a bunch of circumstance. Here's a bunch of opportunity. And now I'm going to work with these circumstances and opportunity to create the results that I want." When we believe that all the powers in the external and so forth, it's hard to help us realize that we can do something about it. So we have to shift perspective, and it is my recommendation that. Everyone consume audios, programs, books, and really train yourself to understand, to realize that the power is within you. Okay, observe your communications that you have with people, observe the movies that you watch, 
observe the information that you're consuming and understand something. If you are consuming information or you are taking in information that makes you feel like the effect, that disempowers you, then that information is going into your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is creating your reality. Most of your reality is not created by your conscious mind. It's created by your subconscious. Our subconscious mind gets programmed all throughout the day with information and experience. People program us, information programs us, the environment programs us, and this is happening all the time since we were kids. And at a later stage of life, we start to realize how this is so and the effects of what has been a net result of the programming that was in our subconscious mind. And then we go out and we start to research and we start to try things to actually consciously reprogram ourselves within. We go in and remove that disempowering programming and instill and install empowering programming. And then we start to notice that reality changes. Our behaviors change. The people that we choose to associate change. Our self-confidence goes up. Our self-respect goes up. We start to accept ourselves. We no longer want acceptance from others and validation from others from a place of ego. We look at it as objective data to help us move towards our vision. And this raises us to a higher level of understanding. To this quote, there is nothing outside of yourself that can ever enable you to get better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. It is within you. So it's important then to surround yourself with people, information, and so forth that builds your self-esteem, builds your self-confidence. It is from this consuming of information and surrounding yourself with information like this that the behaviors that are optimal behaviors that need to be manifested to influence the environment will flow from you. Which brings us to our next point. If you wish to control others, you must first control yourself. So if you want to be a leader, you have to learn and master leading yourself. People aren't going to pay attention to you, especially if they have a high level of confidence and self-esteem, unless you embody the philosophies. Even if it's a contrarian or polarizing philosophy, you have to own it. You have to live it. The goal is to take an ideology, a philosophy, a way of being that stimulates you and integrate it into your being by doing. Repeat action and discipline till it encompasses your way of thinking, your emotions, and your actions. Congruence. And then from that perspective, if someone is interested in learning about how you are, what you do, they'll come to you and you'll be able to transfer. Okay, this is related to transference by Carl Jung. I recommend you learn about that concept. You'll be able to transfer that knowledge, that wisdom, subconsciously and consciously over to the other person with precision through the being. However, if you take the route of learning some leadership techniques and strategies and so forth, but you don't own it, then you're going to try to tell people what to do and they're not going to listen to you. They're going to resist because they know that you really don't understand the philosophy that you preach. You might sound nice or know what to say, but internally doesn't feel right. Which brings me to my next point. Do not think dishonestly. Congruence is what reality is all about as far as manifesting into your reality the vision that you have. Congruence. That means your thoughts, your words, your emotions, and your actions are in alignment. Now, this is an ongoing journey. And there's always opportunity to become more congruent. If your thoughts are a certain way, but then your words are different, then you're going to come off as being dishonest. And the dishonesty is eroding yourself internally. If you believe, as Earl Nightingale said, that you can enrich yourself by deluding others, you can end only by deluding yourself. Your inner world is a reflection of your outer world. If you're surrounded by deception, then ask yourself, where does the deception come from within? Reflect. Look for the areas where you're not living from a place of honesty, acceptance, appreciation for who you really are. 
and go to work to embrace who you are. Be proud of who you are. Accept who you are. Once you do that, you're going to start to get the acceptance of other people. And the goal is not to get the acceptance of other people, but that's just how it works because that goes back to my previous point. If you wish to control others, you must first control yourself. And it's not really controlling others, but rather living by example. And that goes back to my previous point, which is there's nothing outside of yourself that could ever enable you to get better, richer, stronger, quicker, or smarter, or be the kind of person that influences outside of you. Okay, there's nothing outside of you. This is all something that gives us an enormous amount of power and motivation because all we got to do is focus on changing ourselves within. So acceptance and good books to read are Psycho-Cybernetics, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, and How to Become Your Own Best Friend. They point to these inner principles, and one of the main inner principles is to accept yourself, to not shame yourself, which brings me to my next point. Do not regret what you have done. Understand something, that you and everyone around you always tried to do the best that they could do. And while you could have said, well, you know, in retrospect, I could have done this and I could have done that better, we have to accept that in the given circumstances, we did the best that we could. And now we can educate ourselves to do better. So it's not from a place of if you did something, you know, messed up that you don't recognize it. It's that you don't shame yourself because when you shame yourself and you keep integrating that shame in you, you are, again, eroding yourself. And in a way, you're not thinking honestly because people are basically good. And to think dishonestly about yourself, which is not related to being good by shaming yourself, is to not understand yourself, that you are basically good. And the goal is to see that goodness in you, to reflect back and say, I am a good person. I am a person that is worthy and my beliefs are worthy. And as a result of that, I'm going to create my vision. And my vision is going to be one that brings me joy, happiness, fulfillment, and it's going to contribute to the lives of others. And it's also going to contribute to evolution, a higher purpose. This comes from a place of acceptance. In power versus force or letting go, we talk about the levels of consciousness. Acceptance being one of the higher levels of consciousness. We have to accept our past and make peace with it and use that information, not be ignorant on it, to teach us about how to be right now, to help us live more consciously. When your opponent is hurrying recklessly, you must act contrary and keep calm. You must not be influenced by the opponent. Understand something that in this world that we live in, everybody is fighting their own battles. Okay? They're fighting them within themselves, and they're taking it out on other people externally. And it's a whole bunch of people fighting their battles to rise up to higher levels of consciousness. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because this is how we evolve. We evolve through conflict. We evolve through understanding. We evolve through all these experiences that we have with ourselves and others with each other. Now, as you evolve, you're going to develop a inner calm. And when you see somebody acting recklessly, maintaining that inner calm can help you make a better decision. Now, how do you develop that internal calm? Well, there's a number of things that I've worked on that I've really embraced into my philosophies now that I've realized along the journey of entrepreneurship and in life. Number one is a concept called controlled chaos. You can call this training or sparring. It's placing yourself in environments that can be overwhelming, complex, stressful, strategically so you could learn to develop presence of mind. In the 33 Strategies of War, Robert Greene says, amidst the turmoil of events, do not lose your presence of mind. Now, easier said than done, but if you realize how it's cultivated, then you can place yourself in those environments where you are being pushed off your center and then through the repetition of being in those environments and learning the various skills 
and wisdom and knowledge to be able to maintain that center. When you find yourself in those circumstances again that threw you off, you'll maintain a calm. Then, when you find yourself in other situations in life that are kind of related directly or indirectly, you'll maintain a sense of calm. So the goal is to go through life and challenging situations with a sense of calm. Now, this doesn't mean you can't feel intense emotions and excitement and happiness and ups and downs. It's not to invalidate that. What we're really focusing on here is creating our vision, bringing success into reality. And along the journey of creating our vision, there's going to be moments that throw you off. And your ability to stay calm in those situations and think strategically, objectively, and take the very specific action to move you forward is going to be the determining factor of if you move forward or not. And again, this comes from the inner world. So let's reflect upon this stuff. Our goal is to evolve ourselves internally to make that our number one priority. First, we have to learn how to lead ourselves. We have to think clear and honestly. We have to have purity of our intent within, okay, specific. And we have to make peace with our past. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to appreciate ourselves so we can raise our level of confidence and faith because by doing so, we'll trust ourselves even more. We'll become our own best friend. And then train our abilities, all these things we're talking about, by placing ourselves in environments that are controlled chaos to reveal ourselves, reveal to us circumstances in those environments, in those situations will reveal to us about ourselves and the areas that we need to optimize to move forward. Then when we're in the arena moving forward, Okay, doing the business and in the front lines or however you want to look at it. We can observe various opponents and our opponents sometimes could be ourselves being reckless and whatnot. And we'll be able to see things very clearly and objectively and make the right decisions, training ourselves. Wisdom. Wisdom. You must understand that, that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. Okay? More than one path to the top of the mountain. This is about keeping an open mind. Now, as much as I talk about being very specific and focused and knowing exactly what you need to do to achieve your outcome, I'm not talking about being closed-minded. The goal is to increase our focus while increasing our awareness. And we do this by dedicating time to keeping an open mind. So one of the best ways that I've found to do this is to connect with people that don't see reality the way that I do. To learn about things that aren't necessarily interesting to me, but to figure out how those things are interesting to other people. To study somebody's belief and ideology that I don't agree with and understand their reality, understand how they came up to that conclusion without trying to change their mind. Or another way of doing this, if you're an entrepreneur, and I learned this from Jay Abraham, is to invest time outside of your industry and learn about other industries, learn about other businesses, learn about businesses and industries that are not even related to your world. For example, if you're in the world of tech entrepreneurship, invest time in maybe a mom and pop restaurant or a manufacturing facility or something like that, and just kind of see the parallels and connects and you'll even pick up information, wisdom and understanding from the people in those environments, from observing how the system works, that will help you optimize your business. This helps us with the next point, perceive that which cannot be seen with the eye. So a lot of things in life, as you rise up in wisdom, you're going to be able to see very clearly through your inner eye of understanding that others cannot perceive. They won't be able to see it. You'll find yourself in environments, masterminds, group scenarios, even dealing with people that you have been you know, rising up with, growing with friends, family, and so forth. And you'll be able to see an outcome or you'll be able to see a pathway that they can't see. And it's going to seem so obvious to you. And if you try to say to them, okay, well, don't you see that thing? Like, it's right there. They just won't see it. Understand something. 
The goal is to make the result happen. It's not to try to convince people. If someone is open to see it, they'll ask you. If they're ready to see it, you'll know, and you'll be able to guide them. But if they're not able to see it, then don't waste your time trying to convince them and rather make the result happen. If you can see something that others can't see, and it's a positive result, then gather your resources, work with your time, energy, resources, and opportunity cost to make it happen. And the more you do this, the more you're going to see what others can't see. You're going to see all kinds of stuff in reality, and you're going to understand so much different deep knowledge that is such rare knowledge. And this information is going to help you produce results even faster, more effectively, and create more influence and positivity in your life and others because you are learning to trust yourself. One of the things we need to do is we need to learn to trust ourselves when we see something that others don't see and work with that information. When we work with it, we start to see even more things. This is where wisdom comes from. Okay, wisdom is knowing the difference. And sometimes knowing the difference being, is being able to see things and accept that you see things that others don't see. You have to first believe it's possible. And all of us have experienced this to some degree, some more than others. And we have to make a conscious effort to not rely upon the information of others. Even as I do these discussions in the books, I share with my own insights and perspectives. Because it's not just what's given to you in these books, but what you perceive from them. A sentence, as mentioned earlier, can mean one thing to one person and something totally different to another person. You can give somebody one sentence and they can create no success with it. You give that same sentence to another person and they can create tens of thousands of dollars of bottom line business, okay, money to their bottom line in their business, or they could take that same sentence and positively influence the life of others. They could take that same sentence and totally shift their own reality internally around, which entirely changes the course and trajectory of their life. It is difficult to understand the universe if you study one planet, if you only study one planet. So again, going back to what I was saying earlier, study as much of the different areas that exist in this world that might even seem a little taboo and weird and whatnot, but go and study those. That's how you acquire wisdom. Anyone that I've ever met who has acquired a high level of wisdom always had a polarizing, contrarian, and very, very unconventional way of looking at reality. And some of the key things that they had in their psyche is the curiosity and desire to understand things that people didn't want to understand. They would go and try to figure things out in areas where there was a lot of knowledge and wisdom, but people would not want to go there because they were afraid. And they would go there because they had the confidence and faith that it wouldn't influence them negatively, but rather they would learn from it. And as a result of it, they became really wise. Now, they don't actually go around and tell everyone where their sources of information come from. But one thing they do have is in leadership positions, they're able to solve problems with precision and ease. So based on the objective of the company, for example, they might have gotten wisdom from all kinds of sources. But one of their employee or staff comes up to them and has a problem or an opportunity that needs to be executed upon or so forth that person is able to give them the solution or the guidance in such a way that no other person can give them. Now, if you want to be that kind of person, if you want to be the kind of person that's wise like that, consider studying a broad array of studies or areas of knowledge, not necessarily for being random, but for being strategic to help you understand the parallels. Now, one of my favorite learning models is the format learning model. Why, what, how, what if? You want to know why things are the way they are, what it is, the theoretical breakdown, how does it apply, and what if, where else does it apply? So what we want to do is we want to go and study different kinds of knowledge and figure out how that knowledge applies 
to what we're trying to do. Respect Buddha and the gods without counting on their help. This is faith. Real faith is the belief that the forces and the elements and the gods are on your side. Okay, looking deep within yourself and knowing that what you are creating is proper. It's something that needs to manifest in reality. And that if you're not getting the kind of help that you think you should get, that you actually are getting the help. You're getting the help to learn how to rely on the resources that you have to solve problems, to produce results. So you have to respect the gods without counting on their help and becoming self-reliant. This taps you into the knowledge that you could say the gods wanted you to know, which is how to work with your inner world to create your reality. To become the enemy, see yourself as the enemy of the enemy. To become the enemy, see yourself as the enemy of the enemy. Think broad spectrum. Think multidimensional. Think multi-layer. The more you rise up in wisdom, the more multidimensional and multi-layer you will start to see things. When studying a person or studying a competitor, observe how they interact with their environment, with each other, with their marketplace. Study them and see how positivity reflects in the output. See how negativity reflects in the output. Think about the things that if you see them doing to another person, they have the possibility of do th doing those same things to you and see the output, see the outcome. One of my favorite things to do is when I'm connecting with someone is I observe how they treat others around me. Because, you know, they'll always be in their best behavior when they're dealing with me, but it's how they treat others and how they work with their environment that reveals to me about who they really are. And they might be able to put on their best behavior around me, but I know that when they're experiencing chaos, if they're treating others negatively around me, either in my awareness, in my presence, or through my research of studying them and finding out information about them, then I know that in chaotic situations, they're going to be that same way towards me. And I found this to be true. Develop intuitive judgment and understanding for everything. Intuitive judgment and understanding for everything. How do we develop intuitive judgment? Well, first of all, we have to learn to trust ourselves that we do have intuitive judgment. Most of us have had enough experience in life that we have unique experiences where we have wisdom in that is so different than anybody else's experience. And we have that knowledge. We have that insight. We have that wisdom. And we have to learn to tap into that wisdom. And we first do this by becoming our own best friend, as mentioned earlier, realizing that the outer world is a reflection of our inner world, and going to work to evolve ourselves within. On this journey, you'll tap more into intuition. It is said that the warriors is the twofold way of pen and sword, and he should have a taste for both ways. Even if a man has no natural ability, so he can be a warrior by sticking assiduously to both divisions of the way. The way of the pen and the way of the sword. Remember this. It's important to look at both sides of the spectrum. If you are wanting to become a successful entrepreneur, I always recommend studying the book knowledge, the theoretical knowledge, and also the action knowledge. Now, in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, they talk about how you can get the book smart knowledge, but then you can also get the street smarts knowledge. And I recommend getting the street smarts and the book smarts. And the street smarts, you can learn about that from the book Robert Greene did with 50 Cent, the 50th law, strictly about street knowledge. I was very fortunate that I had mentors who taught me street knowledge. Okay, those were involved with gangs, organized criminals, and so forth. I didn't judge them. And I wouldn't do things their way, but I learned from them. And I also went on the other side of the spectrum, learning from individuals who did things by the book. 
studying the books and understanding the way of the sword. It's important to do this. It's important to keep an open mind because if you do not keep an open mind for these disciplines, these different areas, then you might find yourself in a position where you wouldn't understand how to solve that problem. You'll find yourself in a circumstance where you won't be able to tap into creativity because you don't have the wisdom and understanding through experience to be able to solve that problem. Essentialism. Distinguish between gain and loss in worldly matters. Do nothing that is of no use. So one of my favorite philosophies is minimalism. Many of you know one of my earliest videos, actually the earliest video on my YouTube channel, is the one where I, when I transitioned out of my IT business, I got rid of everything, put everything in a backpack, and traveled. That was one of the best things I did because it taught me the value of knowledge and wisdom and how it's not about the stuff that you have, but it's about the resourcefulness of working with what you have. And then when I went out and figured out what I wanted to do next, which was actually the genesis of this YouTube channel, it was having that focus and clarity based on very specific, minimal, physical, mental, and emotional things to work with and the resourcefulness resourcefulness of it that allowed me to create a very unique way of going about this process on YouTube. Now, throughout the years, I've maintained that. Okay, so I, I own more stuff, but not a lot more stuff. But I learned to value resourcefulness even more because I believe that that was one of the big contributing factors as far as success goes. And one of my favorite audios and I've ever listened to was the one that Darren Hardy did on the 10 minute talks. I'm going to put a link in the description for it, which is when he connected with someone who created a lot of success. And, you know, I recommend listening to the audio and you can learn more about it. The wisdom that he essentially acquired was that only a few things matter about anything. Only a few things matter about anything. So that being said, we live in a time today where there's so much complexity and we get overwhelmed when there's only a few key disciplines, a few key things that when focused on with repetition, it will produce the results. And a lot of things we do have little or no use towards our vision. So we have to determine what our vision is, obviously. Number two is we have to look at what are the things that's going to actually move us towards the vision. And even when it comes to creating business, I do things very lean and efficient. I rely on automation and I keep the system very clean and efficient. Everything from marketing, selling, fulfillment, client support, and everything is done at a high level, but with high levels of efficiency, little to no wastage. And I challenge myself to continuously raise the bar on that. You should not have any special foundness for a particular weapon or anything else for that matter. Anything that you have a foundness to, anything that you attach yourself to will be taken away from you as a lesson in life. So appreciate what you have, work with what you have, but do not become overly attached to what you have. If you find yourself being overly attached to something, life will teach you a lesson. You'll be hit on that area directly or indirectly to teach you a very valuable lesson. And that is this. You are to focus on the vision and create your vision, make your vision show up in reality. The tools, the weapons, the things, the different aspects of reality are there for you to work with, but they're not the end result. And finally, the aim of martial arts is not having to use them. So we learn all these disciplines. We learn all these different strategies. We invest time learning from different sources and information and so forth, not necessarily because we have to use all of this, but if we need to use it, we can use it. But however, we only focus on what we need to do to produce the results and no excess. Discipline, one of my key favorite areas to focus on and cultivate on a consistent basis, self-discipline. You know, when I listened to 21 Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires in, back when I was in my 20s, Brian Tracy said, if you can discipline yourself to do what you know you have to do, whether you feel like it or not, your success is virtually inevitable. If you can discipline yourself 
to do what you know you have to do, whether you feel like it or not, your success is virtually inevitable. Now, most of us know we have what we have to do. And part of the growth opportunity is to challenge ourselves to stay on course, to observe what distracts us and gets us back on course, put systems and processes in place so we can stay on course and practice self-discipline in all things. Practice staying consistent. Self-discipline and willpower can be trained and developed. Now, we don't necessarily always want to rely on these things, but we should absolutely remember that in today's world, where everything is so connected, we easily can become distracted. Marketers are trying to take your attention, not for malicious reasons, because they want you to pay attention to their stuff, but it might, might not necessarily be in your favor, or it might not necessarily move you towards your vision. So you have to cultivate the discipline to recalibrate yourself when you lose focus to get back on course, or discipline yourself to not go down an area where you'll drift and go back on course. So remember this, you can only fight the way you practice. Everything in life is practice. From the moment you wake up till you go to sleep, you have an opportunity to practice all these principles. Then when you're working, when you're doing the things, when you're in the arena, the practice will pay out. It will pay off in that moment. But don't just look at certain moments as practice. Everything is practice. Yes, it requires more presence. Yes, it requires more awareness. Yes, it requires, requires more discipline. But that's what you need to do if you really want to produce results at a high level. When you decide to attack, keep calm and dash in quickly, forestalling the enemy. Attack with a feeling of constantly crushing the enemy from first to last. Discipline. How do you stay calm and execute upon what needs to get done? Practice. When do you practice? All the time. All the time it's practice. And all the time is also while you're practicing the arts and ever, everything you're doing with discipline because you're cultivating discipline. Then we're in, your, in the moment where you have to attack, when you have to execute upon the move that requires bold execution of the move, you'll do it with calm and precision. As mentioned earlier, if you do not control the enemy, the enemy will control you. And the way is in training. Okay, the way is in training. So don't just see the training as a set thing you do every day. Okay, this is my training time. You're always practicing and training. And that brings me to my next point. Become acquainted with every art. And that relates back to what I was talking about earlier and all throughout the video. Open your mind to Learn about reality from perspectives that you aren't necessarily interested in learning in. See a, somebody else's viewpoint. I love art shows, art galleries, music shows. I love learning about a profession or an art from somebody that I've never even heard of before. Maybe it's a certain kind of musical instrument. Maybe there's a certain kind of thing that they do. I study it. I'm interested in learning about them because I want to not only learn about what they do, but I want to learn about why they do it, how that got them to where they are, how they went about learning it, and what I can learn about myself as I'm interacting with them, and what can I take from what they're teaching me and apply it to what I'm interested in. Also related to the next point, know the ways of all professions. And never stray from the way. Okay, discipline. Pick the vision. Okay, use the Robert Dills model. Create the vision of what you want. Cultivate the identity internally. Okay, identity level, which is the next level down. Inner world, within. Evolve yourself internally. Become your own best friend. Raise your self-esteem, your self-confidence. From there, your values and beliefs. Change your values and beliefs because that's going to drive how you respond to circumstances. Change your values and beliefs to be that of optimal. Identify and develop the core capabilities, the next level down in the DILTS model, and make it a practice and discipline to cultivate those core capabilities all day long to move you towards your vision. And take the behaviors, or do the behaviors all day long that produce the result because that's where the influence happens on the environment. And never stray from the way. You know, this whole process requires focus and discipline. But it doesn't have to be tense and aggressive. This can be a joyous process. This is a process that I've been following and I continue to refine. And I enjoy it. I love it. Every area of my life is related to my vision. 
I have systematically cultivated it to be so over the years. And always remember this. Step by step, walk the thousand mile road. Presence and discipline. Every moment, stay present. Understand that you are moving towards your vision. But every single step gives you optimization data. Every single step reveals to you about yourself. Every single step reveals about the environment. And all this information is valuable because it helps you achieve the results that you want. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.